the WWE draft is officially closed. Now, while the draft was the week of Backlash or something like that, the rosters weren't locked until like the week after Backlash, which they were teasing, oh, there could be some trades and people moving and all that stuff. And there wasn't. Cool, WWE. But with that, we can officially look at the rosters, how they're constructed now, and see really what the title picture is for each title on each show. We're gonna look at SmackDown, see each title on SmackDown currently, and who are their top contenders right now, and who could be a uh, contender down the line or a surprise one-off, you know, championship match getter. This is the SmackDown title picture post WWE draft. All right, starting off with the WWE Tag Team titles, currently held by A-Town Down Under. If you recall, they won them at WrestleMania in the ladder match when it was for the Undisputed titles, but A-Town Down Under won the SmackDown ones and also True Wonder Raw ones. And for me, their top challengers, the people who could be thrown into a few now and it makes sense, are DIY, Legado Den Fantasma, and Street Profits. The Legado one's a stretch, because it'll come back heel heel. All four, I assume it will be Angel and Umberto who are challenged for it. They can go. So while it wouldn't be a, a long feud, maybe a couple weeks on SmackDown, it could be a feud that happens right now. Street Profits are with Bobby Lashley currently and they're super over. Same with DIY. I'm kind of throwing them in there together. They are both super popular super over everyone wants to see them kick a ton down on this ass so top challengers throw them for you today make it make sense it will so now my dark horse down the line which means basically they can maybe be a summer or a fall feud or if you want to give them like a one-off random smackdown title shot cool and for that i have pretty deadly cedric alexander and shanti adonis and the oc pretty deadly against it's a heel versus heel thing so it'll be hard to explain but they're, not, they're pre daily is not as high on a chart as Legato is. Tougher to explain down, it'll maybe down the line, or maybe A Town down under turns face, something like that. Cedric and Ashanti are, that one would just be a, here's a random tile shot because they have nothing else to do. And the OC, they have the, uh, they have the pedigree, they have the history of being like tag champs in other places. I think they were tag champs at one point. You could throw them in there like a random one-off and that would actually make sense. So those are my dark horse ones for tag team title. Now moving on to WD Women's Tag Team Championships held by Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. I have contenders here from both Raw and SmackDown because since these are the only women's tag titles, they can go between the brands freely. And so my top contenders are Damage Control, Chelsea Green, Piper Niven, Candles LeRae, Indy Hartwell. Damage Control makes sense because Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill beat Damage Control for attack titles at Backlash. So if you want to run that back, they can. Chelsea Green, Piper Niven are one of the more over acts in WWE. So if they want to throw them a tile shot, that makes sense. And then Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell are building steam. They kind of cooled off for a bit, but I like what they're doing with Candice and Indy. Like Candice was just turned into an asshole and Indy's kind of been following suit, racking up wins, so they can run that back and it'll be all right. For my dark horse down the line, Alba Fire, Isle of Dawn, KC Square, Katana Chance, and Kaden Carter, Zoe Stark, and Shayna Baszler, Ivy Nile, Maxine Dupree. All four of those are just here. We're filling time. Here's a tag match. Cool. So women's tag t titles, I think they're kind of parked with Bian Bianca Bella and Jay Cargill for a while as they build up Jay Cargill and give that Invincible Aura, not much more to go on for that one. Next we have the United States title currently held by Logan Paul. My top challenges for that are LA Knight, Shinsuke Nakamura, Dragon Lee, Bobby Lashley, Andrade. This one was a little weird to like figure out how they can get there. LA Knight, obviously he's super over and they've kind of been avoiding each other because I think they're saving it for Logan Paul's next championship feud for that. Shinsuke Nakamura is someone who has the pedigree. They even just throw him into a feud randomly. Shinsuke's Yakuza anime boss style will just make it make sense. Dragon Lee and Bobby Lashley are super popular and you get, uh, throw him in there, figure out a feud, go from there. Same thing with Andrade. 
Andrade, actually Andrade Logan Paul. Can we get that? That would be pretty dope. But it just uh, the, the matches between those three and Logan Paul, Logan Paul just eviscerating them on the mic because I don't think any three of them can touch Logan on the mic. It would be fun. And those, all five of those containers can just step in now. Cool, I want to fight you. Cool, bada bing, bada boom, we have a feud. Dark Horse down the line. This one was a little thin because after those five, I don't see anyone else that really will get a shot. So for that, I have Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, and Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin has been up, is on TV again, albeit for the King uh, Ring Tournament, but he's still on TV. He had a bunch of good work in NXT. So if you want to throw him a random title shot or a random like one month feud with Logan, that's cool. Kevin Owens and Randy Orton just went for a United States title at WrestleMania. If they could always run it back, they can make sense. Or get through like a one-off on SmackDown. Logan, hey, you got to defend your title against Randy Orton. Logan, you got to defend your title against Kevin Owens. Boom. Makes sense. Everyone's happy. Fan favorites. Moving on. Next, we have the WWE Women's Championship, currently held by Bayley. And for this one, there are a couple of contenders. I have Tiffany Stratton, Naomi, Bianca Belair, Jay Cargill and Nia Jax. But Tiffany Stratton is clearly the is being positioned as the next big heel in the division. The moment she got on the roster, she's made a big deal, pissed everyone off around her, and she's already challenged for a title at Backlash and Triple Threat. Came up short, a one-on-one -on -one Bailey feud would be awesome. Naomi, they could run it back. You know, Naomi ate the pin at uh, Backlash. They could run that back at, uh, for like a one-off feud. Makes, makes sense. Bianca Belair, Jade, uh, Jade Cargill the two most protected women in the company right now, the two most presented dominantly women in the company right now. They're just, they're stars. They come off of stars. They fit, wrestle as stars and all that. They want to throw them in with Bailey. Jay Cargill, I still think it's a little early, but Bianca Belair, definitely. There's history there with Damage Control. The Bailey led Damage Control versus Bianca Belair that ran late to 2022. There's history there. And Nia Jax is just Nia Jax. Sailed over to a Braun Strowman. She wants to play up the monster heel. Well, hers is a little more sassier. It's f funny. You want to throw them into a uh, few now. And so with that, that's pretty much the entire division. <laughs> My dark horse down the line, I have Candice LeRae, Chelsea Green, Tegan Knox. Candice LeRae and Chelsea Green are both great mid-card heels. To where if you throw them a, a random title shot on SmackDown, it's like, oh, cool. This is great. Get a good match. Tegan Knox, it's... You have to jump through hoops. I can see it more so like an open challenge thing where Bailey's like, I'll fight anyone today. And Ting is like, here I am. From all those down the liners, Chelsea Green would be fun. A Chelsea Green Bailey, like one month random throwaway feud would be fun. But yeah, that's the WWE women's title scene. And then finally, we have the WWE Championship hoisted right now by the American Nightmare, Cody Rose. Top contenders are AJ Styles, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, Solo, Sagoa. AJ Styles, they can run it back. It was such a fantastic feud, uh, like mini feud, because it just came up like three weeks between Mania and Backlash. Great match. They can do it again. Styles wins like a triple threat, normal contender, whatever. Run that over summer. No back complaint. Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, they're superstars that they just came up and challenged. Cody was like, yo, I want to fight. Cause it's like, all right. And the crowd's like, yeah. And Solo Sokoa being the leader of the new bloodline, he could rack up some wins and then challenge Cody at a money in the bank. If, if they do it right, that could be a good enough SummerSlam main event. My dark horse down the line, Bobby Lashley, Shinsuke Nakamura, LA Knight and Carmelo Hayes. Bobby could be a very fun uh, feud of like big dominant Dude versus the All-American Hero. Shinsuke and Cody have history. They ran it back lat towards the end of last year. While it wouldn't be the most interesting feud, it would certainly be entertaining because both of them are great together. LA Knight, if you want to just put the popular star against the popular star, go for it. And Carmelo Hayes, who called out Cody, came up short. But if Carmelo wants to you know, attack him and get a feud for the fall, should Cody still be champion, that would be pretty dope carmelo can handle it all right that takes care of smackdown title scene do you agree with me do you disagree who do you, who would you swap out again if somebody wasn't mentioned it's because they're either not on the roster they're hurt for a while or they can tell you what catering is for the week but let me know down below if you would change anything but yeah that does it for this go ahead like and subscribe really helps me out thank you for the love on all the recent videos 
uh, on all socials. I am at It's Heartfelt. But right now, I'm just heartfelt. I'll catch you guys in the next video. All right. Peace.